Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of our Salasta playthrough. Well, I'm not saying full playthrough at this point. I'm really, I did really enjoy when I was practicing a little on my own. I'm very excited to be uh, recording some of this to YouTube, and hopefully people are excited for it as well, so that I have an excuse to play through all this on the channel. Uh, if not, I'll be playing it through it on my own, I'm sure. But uh, I do plan on recording for the rest of today, at the very least, and seeing how many episodes we can get through. We're going to do at least the full first mission, uh, 100%. So, we've talked to a few people, we've gotten some quests, it's time for us to leave town and go out into the world. We've been charged to check out Lufthansa, I mean KLM, um, this KLM uh, outpost is where we're supposed to go. And we're being told about overland travel currently, which is great. So yeah, we get a bit of a look-see at the world map, the area that we're playing in here for this particular campaign. Uh, we could re-enter the town where we are now, but we're gonna go and click on Kerlem Outpost, Travel. And as the tutorial was telling us, we can choose our pace. So we can take either three days, or if we go fast, two days, or if we go slow, four days uh, for this particular travel. And the speed at which we go will have different difficulties. We'll just play on normal. And yeah, travel settings, we can have the game auto-pause for various things, including great quality of life stuff like auto-casting the good berry spell when the long rest starts so that we can feed ourselves on good berries as opposed to using our supplies, unless our ranger has used up all their spell slots in combat, in which case, then we'll dip into our supplies. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and start traveling. That travel routine, so we travel for about eight hours a day, gives you enough time then to eat, sleep, do other activities like crafting, talking, playing games, playing an instrument, and praying. And then we get a little fatigue meter, you'll see that go up as the day goes on until we rest. Oh, Roland found a bird's nest, gathered some eggs. Three food rations, that was a lot of eggs. Holy cow. And we get a scripted attack here. We are guaranteed on this first night to be attacked so that you can learn about uh, like com more combat mechanics, the surprise round and whatnot. Because actually there's even a little note in the pop-up that's gonna happen here, pointing out that there is a, there is a cleric domain that basically gives you um, immunity to be surprised at night like this. And like the tooltip is like, don't normally it would work, but it's not going to work for this one just because we wanted you to learn uh, some things. And then, oh yes, we can ready an action, which is something that hey, Baldur's Gate Three doesn't let you do. And then we learned about the shortcuts for our weapon configurations that we can also talk. About. So we are not going to get to act this first round. Also, we have kind of bad an issue, which is not great. This first round, not worried. The, they were, the game is very nice on this like fixed encounter to start the bandits far enough away, and I don't think any of them have any ranged attacks, so we don't actually get hit on this first surprise round. The problem is in round two, these three bandits are gonna go before us, and, oh, did you actually reach us? No, not quite. So now we're going through surprise where we get no action right now. Apparently, we haven't learned that we need to keep watch at night. Yeah, now they're gonna start and you won't attack us, which is good, but they're going to take some hits here, which is very unpleasant. Yeah. Critical miss. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's really generous. So Casimir is here at point-blank range, is in base-to-base -base contact with a bandit, which is not very happy-making. Um, well, we're going to finish resting after this, so we've got a few options. Uh, I think I might just go ahead and start with the Thunder Wave and see about knocking this back. Or we can just go and hit them with some magic missiles. I don't want to use my Chilled Touch um, because I will have disadvantage with the ranged hit. Uh, although I do have Shadow Dagger, which will just be a not dexterity. It's a wisdom saving throw, so I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm based on this contact here. I won't be able to hit more than one person with the Thunder Wave. At least if it doesn't kill them, it's still got a good chance of knocking them back and then... Yeah, Casimir's not really going to be able to go anywhere to avoid anything. No, we'll do the Thunder Wave. Arcana, Evo. Malmis. Okay. Decent damage and a bit of a knockback. And then, yeah, Casimir could move. Now, cover is a mechanic in Slasta, which uh, Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't have, for example. So you got that sort of, like, XCOM-style cover mechanic. But I don't think there's any reason for him to do that. Anyone who wanted to chase him down could... So we'll just stay clustered up here, because at least this way, no one can get behind us, and we can cover each other, so it's going to be okay. Um, I do have the option of maybe casting a bonus spell, which would be Sparkle, to light some things on fire, to make some light, but it's not an actual attack, so we're not going to Now, Quick Save over here is actually in a worse situation, unfortunately and annoyingly. Um, I 
guess we're just gonna have to eat the fact that we're gonna have to be attacking with uh, disadvantage as nearby enemies. Well, I mean, unless this engage is a, is a an action action, so I would do that and then I wouldn't be able to attack. I guess I could move, draw an attack of opportunity, just so that I can attack without disadvantage. I don't know what turns out to be better. I'm just gonna go ahead and stand where I am. Um, and we're gonna go and Arcana Evil Malmis! No quarter given. Okay, I don't remember what my curse of time does. Uh <coughs> that's my timekeeper here. Curse of time. So whenever I damage an opponent with a spell, they become afflicted with Curse of Time. Enemies under Curse of Time take half your proficiency damage bonus, round it up, force damage, and start of their turn for the next minute. Okay, so they're they're taking some damage over time. Much. I mean, I don't think it stacks, but it's still a nice little extra bit of damage. So that's gonna be okay. And my bonus spells here, sparkle. Oh right, I could have maledictioned. Oh, I forgot about that. I really should have dropped the malediction. I'll try to do that next round. I don't want to do it now because we might lose concentration. Um, Cassandra, let's just go ahead and swap you over to your dual melee. I know you're specialized in archery, but that's going to be okay. And we don't actually have a hit point rating on this bandit because you can see here our knowledge. It's one of four. The um, As you complete fights with people, you will do the, you'll see a little survival check that gets rolled at the end of the fight. And if you succeed at that, you unlock some knowledge of the type of creatures you fought. So you'll, you'll learn about their AC, you'll learn about their hit points. We know this person is low. It would be nice if we knew if they were gonna die from the Curse of Time. I suspect the answer might be no. So I'm thinking, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack with my bonus action over here. Now I can also cast my spell, which would be uh, mostly my hunter's mark. And I'm going to bonus action attack with a short sword on this one. I don't need to do a lot of damage. We do need to hit. All right, and then I'll use my main hand attack. Yeah! Ah, that I like. Yeah, and take them out. We're not going to move uh, Cassandra around because she would draw attacks of opportunity if she did, so we're just going to turn. Yeah! She's going to get for 14! Holy cow! That was real bad. That was real bad. Uh, all right, listen, Roland, we are going to have to go and try to put this person down immediately. Um, I could bonus spell cast. Yeah, I'm gonna bonus Bacri divine favor. Viribe. Adding some radiant damage in here, and let's go ahead and take a whack at this guy. And if we hit, I'll, I am gonna go ahead and divine smite as well. A palpable uh, hit. I just want to make sure he went down right away. Um, if I went here, oh, he'd still be able to reach Casimir annoyingly. Because he could walk around and then up here without being threatened. If I'd move Casimir, then that wouldn't be as much of an issue. Still, I'll do this. And hope that he attacks me rather than Cass. Since I'm wearing armor. Oh, look, Cass has got his uh, scale nail. I forgot about that. Only quick save that doesn't have her armor, but there you go. You get attacked, great stuff. I don't know what, uh, you know, how the AI does its various prioritizations and things. Um, we are going to be finishing our rest here, so I'm going to get all my spell slots back. I'm going to magic missile. Again, I don't know how many hit points this person has. I suspect one magic missile will either almost certainly or even literally certainly kill them. But I'm wondering about double tapping them just to make sure. Because it would suck if they stayed up with like one HP. So I'm going to throw two missiles at them. Arcana, Evo, Malmis. I suspect we're wildly overkilling them, but I want to make sure. And we are going to Eldritch Blast this Arcana bandit. Arcana, Evo. Nice. And now we can finish our long rest. Now, we can also go around looting people. You'll die like the rest. If I click on a lootable, it actually loots in a five hex radius, you can see over here, which is really nice. Now, again, I don't have to worry about looting things because the, uh, the scavengers are going to come through and pick it up. Um, I can also drop things if I've, if I've picked up more than I need. Now, I don't know if this one got looted. See, this one's still got the sparkle. I think it was out of range. 
chain. It would have been great to find a medium armor, but it looks like they were only light and heavy. But I can go and at least send the leather armor over to quick save. And what's her current AC? 13? Still going to be 13? Oh, right. Yeah, of course, because her warlock armor is light armor of AC 11, which isn't much. She's basically wearing leather armor. Um, I, for some reason, I think she, I thought she was just wearing cloth, but I would have been Casimir to start off with. Um, all right. Well, I guess that's going to be fine. We're still going to have to find you some medium armor or even um, I guess I could have bought you studded leather, which would have been better than just the regular leather that you've got going on here. But uh, we would have been looking to replace it at some point with the, the medium anyway. So I guess that's going to have to be fine. All right. Well, um, that's that. We're going to leave the rest of the loot on the ground because, again, I th as I understand it, the Scavengers Guild will go and collect that for us. We'll rest, get our spell slots back, and more importantly, <laughs> at least in Cass er, Cassandra's mind, uh, regain our hit points as well. All right, rest is happening. Time is ticking by. And we're on the road again. Oh, we killed the deer. We got Okay, so we got tons of food rations. Hey, you can always interrupt your travels by pushing the interrupt button. Or you can click on a character portrait, open the inventory, start new crafting as well. We don't have the material for crafting. There's our second rest near KLM. You can see we cast the Goodberry spell. Yeah, provides food for the whole party. Oh, we caught some more food too. Jeez. I love the little, little flavor text of our travel. I really like that vibe. You know, the Pathfinder um, computer games had uh, some nice world travel in there too. Trying to remember if uh, I feel like there's another game I've played that's got some of this vibe as well. All right. So that's Kerlem. Kerlem. We're almost there. It's just up the hill. Eyes up and hands on hilts, people. These are the marches. Who put you in charge? I'm just saying, be ready for anything. All right. Let's move up. And what I'm going to do is we get a little closer. For no reason in particular. I'm gonna throw in cautious mode. <laughs> Does it cost us nothing? Be careful, right? Exactly. What's that smell? What is that smell? It smells like goblin up in here. There we, there we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try. I guess I could pause and make plans. That's a good point. Um, who's this up front? Casimir. So he's currently getting a little bit of the attention, which isn't necessarily what I want. Let's say we're going to pull you back. We've got some cover opportunities over here, which is great. Uh, Roland, you're going to keep moving up for it. I mean, you'll you'll be spotted. That's okay. We're going to try to send the others behind some of this cover. Are you... I didn't realize you were encumbered. Uh, you know what? We'll just drop this leather armor to the ground. Yeah, if I didn't need to equip it. We got these daggers too. These are extra. I don't need the extra daggers. Not like she's going to need this to throw because she's just going to Eldritch Blast. I may as well drop these daggers down here as well. That's going to be okay. Turn around. Ooh. Okay, that's Roland. Again, he is going to get spotted, but that's going to have to be okay. Actually, right before we get spotted, do we want to open up an attack? Seems like a decent idea, because we'll get advantage. It's not listing that we will get advantage, but we're going to go for it. I don't know if I can queue up multiple attacks. That would be an interesting question. I don't know that the attack went or not. Two of us are still hidden, which is good. All right, it's Cassandra's turn. She is currently hidden. All right. Yeah, we will get advantage. I'm going to shoot the far away one because we'll probably be able to melee this one. Advantage, so we roll twice, take the best die. Well, we know they have less than 10 hit points overall, so that's good. We're apparently still hidden. I believe the way it works is after you do the attack. Um, well, maybe because it died, it was fine. I think if you don't kill them, you might have to do a um, self check to stay hidden. Sadra currently has, which is great. I could pull back a little bit more, just to reduce the chance that we get spotted by something. Actually, here, there's a little bit of shade, so I'm going to do that. 
And I still have the bonus action. I could Hunter's Mark, but I'm worried that that might break our stealth. I'm not sure if it will, but I'm not going to take that risk. Yeah, I'm assuming these red squares are vision squares. So we're actually kind of okay. Yeah, these are, these are just on, which is great. Turn off the repelling blast as though I didn't want it on for some reason. Boom, dead. Still stealthed. Yeah, so I'll just move here so that we will have cover. And then just end our turn. And then Roland's just gonna, I guess he's just gonna move forward. We'll stick next to the rock wall over here for some cover. I'm sure there's more goblins around. But I don't know, well, I mean, because we can see in the initiative, there's definitely some. We can't spot them. So I think what I might just do is I might just go and do the dodge, which will give enemies a disadvantage against attacking me. Because presumably they might go for him since he's visible here. I guess I could have also... I could have done blesses and things, I'm just realizing with Roland, since if he's not attacking this turn. Alright, come at me. We're, again, we're dodging. Giving disadvantage. Well, 13 and a 14. So yeah, he took the 13, but that's not much worse. Uh, Casimir is visible, so he's not going to get advantage to his attacks. We'll probably just chill touch. A half cover, because he's got cover from Roland here, I think. Or maybe from the hillside. Maybe we'll just shoot Arcana, up. Necro. On a good roll, we'll still get a kill. Hey, we rolled an eight. Great stuff. Um, yeah, go ahead and move up some more. Now, he doesn't have a dodge action going on. Oh, I think uh, Quick Save just got detected. Yeah, just detected by the goblin. Oh, nice. Disadvantage. You are still sneaky sneaky. I guess we should test. Um, what's the duration on Hunter's Mark? One hour, and because I, I can recast it. So we're gonna Hunter's Mark you. Let's pull the card. We're still stealthed. That's good to know. Because that would break stealth in BG3. And I don't know, like tabletop rules, uh, the interpretation for whether or not. Um, a Hunter's Mark would break stealth or not. Part of it, again, is I haven't played a ton of 5th edition. 3rd edition has been my jam, well, 3.5. Uh, yeah, let's just move up. We have a little indicator to show that we are concentrating on a spell. One thing that's really great in, um, in, uh, Celestia here, um, is the fact that, uh, if you're going to take an action that breaks concentration, like let's say you're casting another concentration spell, you'll actually get a pop-up letting you know, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Because this is going to break concentration. The amount of times I've accidentally broken con concentration in BG3 has been more than a little frustrating. And part of it is, again, because I... Um, because I don't have as much as a 5e background, the idea of these concentration spells where you can only have one going at a time, uh, or the fact that like virtually every spell is a concentration spell really messes with me. I'm not saying it's a bad system. I'm just saying it doesn't come up uh, in my brain as much. Um, I'd rather, n he is going next. There's a good chance I kill him in one shot with a great sword, right? Two to six plus strength. We know they don't have, they don't have more than eight hit points. I'm not gonna use a smite. We roll the 12, we dead, combat is over. There we go. We did a survival check for more info. We're being told about short rests if we want to. Um, we only have one person damaged. I don't know that we need to Some justify a short mountain, rest yet. We haven't used a lot of our resources. Uh, we're going to just check the loot. Yeah, I don't see any reason to pick up any of that stuff right now. We could drink a potion. We could do a little out of combat healing. I don't know if we really need to do that. If we drop back in the cautious mode here, I believe we'll see some tracks leading over to the right. Yep. Find out that there's a little goblin cave. This is not, you know, the Explore the Fort quest. You can see a little dot on the minimap, by the way, leading over here. But, Lair of Filth, new quest started. Uh, I have to crawl through here. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. 
sneaky, sneaky some more. Damn, it stinks. We, we should be, be cautious, cautious from now on. on. A little reminder, hey, maybe you want to use cautious mode. I'm already there. Oh, open the map. Is that, yeah, goblin. We get another pop-up here. As you explore, you may come across hanging cages, stalactites, and other hazards ready to fall on your enemies or on you. Target these with an arrow and attack spell. Make them fall and crush anyone beneath them. So we can keep that in mind with these objects, which we can highlight with alt as well. Suitable goblin. Pull back a little bit over here. Consider what we can see. Goblin, 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 goblin. One down there. I don't know if he's in the under the crush spot or not. We may be able to get off, off a few sneak attacks here. I mean, Cassandra's the one with the most stealth, so presumably the best one to start things with would be with her. Maybe we should go for some of the ones that are kind of high up and far away. Pretty bad. We did get the hit. Okay. So that was a really poor roll. We're still stealth, which is great. There you go. New target for Hunter's Mark. I'm going to set one on this guy up here. Everyone's still hidden. Although these two goblins are going to move. They might move towards here and then start spotting us. I wonder if I should spread out. But that, I mean, that'll increase the chance that someone gets spotted, but decrease the chance that we all get spotted. You know? Maybe moving closer wasn't the right way. But we'll see. Alright, that's Cassandra's turn. Alright, they're definitely moving forward. Oh, but the obstacle there has preserved our stealth so far. Okay. Hasimir's up. We get advantage on our chill touch. See this guy. Though. That is a poor damage roll. We're not giving her. We don't have the ability to add our stats right now. Um, I think you're gonna stay right where you are. Hmm, only one of them was smart enough to move forward. Um, I want to drop some maledictions. I think so. Got some cover. Can I not see you? I can't see that one. All I can see is this one over here. Okay. So then, we're gonna malediction that guy. Again, just I, we don't need that much damage, but it'll help to guarantee the kill because we could roll really bad on our base D10. And yes, we're getting to add our charisma, but that might not be enough to kill him. Whereas adding the extra D6, I think might still not be a guaranteed kill, but it's gotta be pretty close. Um, Erlen, so this is probably gonna break stealth for you, but that's okay. We're gonna finish this guy because he's probably gonna end up spotting everyone anyway. So just run up there and smack this dude. I don't think I'll use a spell. Um, that's not the path I expect you to take. Clumsy, yeah, no kidding. Oh, I think because Roland just got spotted. I'm not going to use a Divine Smite. He's already damaged and everything. We're going to be fine. Save that. I still would like to get into cover because they probably do have some range stuff. So just pull around back here. Oh, you actually had a full surprise round. Oh. Let's see the target. Hmm. Is that the only guy left? No, there's someone else as well. Where are they? Can I click over here and camera move. Oh! Well, I should check. When you move, you do get a little uh, line of sight indicator. I was going to say, and we didn't have it there. Well, this is 
definitely gonna result in Cassandra getting spotted. Now this probably will as well because of the uh, vision codes. Oh, well this is interesting. Okay, I won't be in cover, but I'm not gonna walk into any of the red squares. It does give me line of sight on this one, which I do have marked, don't I? Yeah, hundred mark. Lovely. Mark so I can bonus action. Throw it on this guy. And then yeah, I have no way of getting back in cover, unfortunately, so I'll just pull back one more tile and just hope that distance helps. Oh good, he's going the other way. No! No! Uh, okay. Arcana Necro Malmis. That is a miss. We should be fine here. Only a single goblin left. Arcana Evil Malmis. Another miss? What was I saying about we should be fine? We got this rolling. Nice. Uh, no, I don't think we need this mic. More! I think that's the end of the combat. Layer filth completed. Side quest done. Survival check to get some more information about goblins. Excellent. I don't think the goblins are gonna have anything of loot, or of, anything of note as a lootable on their person. I don't know, uh, we can probably leave the money behind. I suspect we probably get full value from that from the uh, scavengers, but I'm not entirely sure. We may as well pick it up. Ooh, scroll asleep. A notebook page. And Fleurs, a primed dagger. Now that we might want to keep because I think these are things you can craft. Prepared by a mana colon enchanter. Oops. This item can craft into a magical version. Use a mana colon rosary and the appropriate ingredient. Also got some arrows that we might want to loot for Cassandra. Oh, she's too far to just get it now. So Roland will pick it up and then we'll take a look. And come down there and double check this. But let me open this. Send the arrows over to Cassandra. And yeah, we'll have to look into some crafting options. I don't know if we need to make magic daggers. None of our people use daggers, actually. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and drop it. We can get it scavenged. That's going to be fine. Uh, I may as well check the other goblin loot bags. Just so that I know. Yeah, more arrows. I think people you shoot with arrows, I think there's a chance of recovering them. We just got some extras. I'll just go and loot this extra bin here, and maybe we'll call that good enough. Um, actually, Cassandra's still stealthed. Just toggling it so that she can move a little faster here. Healing potion? Amethyst with magical properties. Violet, moss, and a scroll of cure wounds. All right, I think that might be it for this little side area. Now we're coming out of the cave and heading back into the fort itself. KRLM. I like how I can open the inventory and people still move. I mean, I can pause as well, but dive in the dirt now. It gives me something to do while they're while they're animating, you know. Move up over here some more. No one's overweighted. Good. Roland's still losing six, missing six hit points, but that's fine. We could short rest, but it feels like we're probably okay. Let's go and pop into cautious mode as we're approaching the fort itself. We've got some lootables. Stuff's on fire. That's never a good thing. You're like, stairs. Why would I take the stairs? Are so good. Nothing spotted. And for the uh, scavenging, we do actually have to pop the fort, the, the chest open. And then we could leave stuff in it. Alright, is medium armor. Okay, hold on. Um, let's throw the hide armor. Bring it up to a 14 AC. I mean, I know it's not as good looking, but it'll have to do. Um, do I really want to throw this old armor away? You know what? I don't need the torch. 
or the candle. Well, you're carrying some of the ration pouches. Let's send that over. Oh, now you're overweighted. Jeez. Want the javelins for throwing. There you go. Just throw, spread some of these rations around. Hi. Right. I'll probably end up dropping some more things to the floor, and particularly the rations. I think we've got way more than we need. But I may as well carry them around for now. I guess I'm just looking. We've hit the 30 minute mark on this video. So what I'll do is we'll put a cut in here and then we're going to keep exploring this fort in the next episode very quietly. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to see you next time. Bye-bye.